Hi, this is Brent LeBlanc, and today we're going to go over my workflow for displacement on uh, some textures that I took myself with my own camera. So I went and took some photographs with my Sony a7R. I kind of did a coverage pass so that I could get the full resolution of each section. So I kind of, let's see, I took a picture like this. And then I just kind of went around the edges so that I could get a full uh, texture acquisition of the entire manhole. Okay, so now I have all of them open. You can see here. And these are all high resolution. Uh, this is at 100%. So what you can do is you can go, once you have all your images open and if you take a if you have a lower resolution camera and you take a lot more images and just stack them you can get high res as well in the same method so once you have all those photographs open what you can do is you can go up to file automate photo merge and you can click on perspective i guess for the layout and then do add open files and it will add every single one of those uh, files that you have and then check blend together. And let's try this content aware of fill a transparent area. Okay. Now we'll hit okay. All right. That took about uh, three minutes to complete that. So now I've got this final image. So I guess this, this kind of fill layer is here. But these are just all the photographs that are stacked on top of each other to create one high resolution image. So this image right here, this is only being viewed at 5%. So this thing is massive. This is like four gigabytes. So if we get zoom in 100%, you can see there's just a ton of data here. What you can do is like once we downsize to like around 8K, which is probably the, the highest resolution you should have or your render is going to be really inefficient okay so let's see what size this is this is uh 18,000 pixels by 15,000 pixels which is ridiculous i'm just making a, a square this is obviously not tileable we're not really using it as a tile i'm just using it as a an example of how to acquire your own textures with your camera and then to make those into usable textures my thought process and when i'm trying to break these out into um, a displacement map using like different layers and kind of figuring out what parts of the displacement map I can pull out directly from the texture and parts of the displacement map that I'm gonna have to create on my own um, that are just from knowing what this thing looks like you can't really get everything in the displacement map from the diffuse you're gonna have to create some of your own uh, layers to this to this texture to be able to to make it work right so I'm just selecting everything and just hit con control E. So now this thing is all on one file. I'm going to go ahead and close these other files now. All right. So now we just have this one uh, file open. And when you're doing something like this, you need to make sure you have set your scratch disk uh, to a place that has a lot of space. My scratch disk is set to a um, SSD drive that I'm using. Um, which I recommend using an SSD drive for your scratch disk. Basically, anytime you have uh, images open in Photoshop, it needs, if you have lots of layers of them, it needs somewhere to store those images before you actually save the file. So you need a scratch disk. All right, so now that we have this all worked out, now I'm going to just duplicate this and we're going to go and make the diffuse layer for this. All right, so I'm going to go up to Image Adjustments, Shadows and Highlights. So now I've got a color version of this map. And now uh, let's work on making the spec map. So I'm just going to duplicate and we'll just go ahead and desaturate it. And then I'm also going to add a adjustment layer in here of uh, levels. And for this map, what I'm trying to do is to call out uh, areas that are going to be shiny versus areas that are going to be more rough. So the areas that are white are going to be 
going to receive more spec and the darker areas are going to see receive less spec. All right. So we'll just work with this one for now. All right. Now I want to duplicate this uh, bottom layer here. Put that into a layer and we'll call this disp for displacement. Make a levels again. And then I'm going to just go ahead and desaturate. All right. So now I'm making the displacement kind of displacement mid. And then I'm going to blur this. All right, something like that. All right, now what I want to do, I need to call out this entire manhole because this entire manhole is kind of bumping up as one big shape. And then this uh, asphalt is actually dipping down. So what I need to do is draw my own displacement map that is lowering this entire thing down. And then also a displacement map on top of that that is cutting out this manhole. So I went ahead and did that already. So I'm going to show you the first step that I took, and then I'll show you the final image afterwards. And then for the, the overall shape that where the asphalt is, I went ahead and I just drew a shape like this. All right. So for my second control signal, let's see, we want to bump this out. And then I would make a, a, a black version layer underneath it, bump it in. So this would be my, my asphalt layer. And I would also blur this as well. Something like that. I'll just go ahead and open the one that I already did. Okay, so I went and did this entire process that I explained earlier. After I'm finished with this, this file is still huge. It's still 13K. So what I want to do once I'm finished with this chunk, I want to uh, change the image down to 8K. So I'll do 8192. So now this is at 100% at 8K, and it's still, I've got a lot of detail here. And this is plenty of detail. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Here's the one that I'd already done. So here was the spec. And then I made a displacement fine layer, which I've shown in previous videos how to make that. It's just a, a high pass filter. And then I just messed the levels a little bit. Then the displacement broad, which you saw me make a minute ago. And then my diffuse layer. And then that was my manhole cover. Uh, what the actual the asphalt part and then this is my manhole cover that I actually went in and uh, just drew the shapes by hand and then I just blurred it uh, so that it can have a little bit of a lip on it all right once we have that you can see what the final result is here with all of them together so let's actually break down how uh, I actually made those and I'll make a polyplane here. All right, so I'm, I know that this is already a, the UVs are probably fine, but I'm just gonna project down Y so that my UV space is zero one. For a polyplane, I think it comes in that way anyway, but we just did it again. Now that I have that, let's start making the shader. So I'm gonna make the AI standard. All right, let's start bringing in the files. Okay, so now what I did was I just went ahead and uh, imported all of my maps. So I have my diffuse, my spec, my disk broad, disk fine, and my two control signals that I made. And I just renamed them all so that they are neat and tidy. And then I took this uh, manhole placement node, which is just a 2D place texture, and I just piped it in all of them into the same one so that I can just scale it. Um, so if it was tileable, then these would all scale together. So now let's uh, hook these up. So let's make AI ranges for them. So I made two range nodes that I'm going to use on this uh, spec. So I'm going to take the out color and put them into both. 
and then I will take the spec range and put that into take the red channel and put it into specular and then I'll just smash it down with one and then I'll take the roughness range take the red channel and then put it into specular roughness so now we need to hook up these uh, displacements so we're only going to do one at a time so let's make a disp displacement shader all right and then we will put just so that I get all my text files generated I'm just going to go ahead and add these all in. I've got everything hooked up and I'm going to render it once so that Arnold will generate text files for these. Okay, before we generate those .txt files, we have to apply this manhole cover so I can just uh I did it from off screen, but you can just go to assign existing manhole cover and we need to add a light to this scene. All right, so now we have our manhole cover, super shiny. Uh, right now, all we have being driven is the uh, diffuse. And the spec is in there, but it's not really doing much. We need to activate our AOVs. So let's open up our old settings. Let's run that. That's the texture raw. That's the diffuse direct, that's with lighting. And that is the spec. So this spec needs a lot of work. So let's click on this spec range. Bring this over here. And then I'm just holding down control and then left clicking inside this box. And if you drag there, it, it's like a, a better slider than this one over here. So. You can also hit this uh, isolate select so we can see that map directly. Spec amount looks good. And I can always mess with that a little bit more. All right, let's go to the spec roughness. All right, let's mess with the spec range again. All right, let's uh, not scrutinize it too much more before we get any displacement going. So right now, if we look at the basic tab in the debug, so if you go to window, toolbar icons, and then check show debug shading icon, you can see your uh, shading types in here. So shading is just the normal one. And then basic will show you a basic shader, but with displacement activated, which we don't have any displacement right now. So let's pause that and get that set up. And another thing we need to do is, uh, since it's going crazy like that, is because we need to set up a couple things in the... Um, so first, let's delete the history, freeze the transformations, and let's call this thing manhole. Go to the shape node for that. So that's the transform. And then let's go to the shape node, go down to Arnold. And we want to turn the subdivision type to Cat Clark. And I think it needs about five for this because uh, I had done this earlier, so I kind of figured it out. And let's turn on auto bump. All right, run that again. And then do update full scene. All right. And it's really crazy because we haven't messed with the settings at all yet. All right, so let's do one displacement map at a time. This is a really good way to, to do it so you know exactly what each one is doing. Got some AOVs that are popping in here. All right, so let's take this first one, this disp broad. And I'll put it in there. Let's update full scene. Okay. So what we want to do is add an AI range. Take that, put in the input. This broad range. And I just collapse that down, hitting one, because uh, I'm only going to be using attributes over here. So if I play this, and let's put the max down to like one or, or point 0.1 and that's still way too high 
0.005. For the disc broad, that's about as much as I want. Now let's try the next map. Displacement fine. Let's make an AI range preemptively. All right, and went crazy because we haven't clamped it yet. So I'm gonna just turn this down to like 2.005. And this is just the, the finest granular detail. Okay, so let's work on the next uh, map. So it's that manhole control, which is just the, the manhole uh, by itself. See what it's doing there. All right, let's make an AI range for that. And now we're just trying to figure out about how far off we want that thing to lift. All right, so now I'm going to take my control signal two, which is this is the asphalt alone. So let's make an AI range for that. And let's do point one. 0 0.01. Actually, we want to invert this one. So go into the image of that, go to effects, and then invert, because we want that to bump down. So since all these are collapsed, what you can do is just hit three, and it'll uncollapse them, because we need to see the out color for them. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect all these, and then I'm going to delete the ones that I had made already. All right, so let's start with the first one. Let's do the, let's start from the bottom and go up. So I'm gonna take the out color, put it into the first node here, this one. And then I'm gonna take, let's just look at the result. Should be the same. Okay, cool. Now I have this set to sum. So whenever I hook in this uh, second control, what it does is it, it's adding those two values together. If I do subtract, it's subtracting those values. And then if I do an average, it does an average of those values exactly like it sounds. Like if I go back to this uh, manhole control here and I start dialing this one up. So let's look what that looks like in the shaded mode. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so now what I want is that overall breakup to be added. So let's go to this displacement broad first. Take the out color there, put it into the input, and this is going to continue to average uh, those values together. So then let's take the fine and let's put that out color into the last one. And now that we have the fine uh, averaging those values, we could probably push the, the broad a little bit more. Let's do 0 0.01. And let's take down that disfine a little bit more. All right, that looks pretty good. I actually want to push the asphalt up a little bit more. Let's go to the control two, point zero three, and that's just pushing up that asphalt layer. All right, so now we have all four uh, displacements working together. So let's go back to shading mode and see what that looks like. All right, cool. So let's look at the specular direct. Uh, let's go to the spec range. Let's add another light in there on the uh, glancing. I'll just do a area light. All right, let me look at the spec direct here. All right, then we can dial this, uh, the specularity a little bit better now. All right, for this one, I'm actually going to go to the rough range. This is going to change how uh, blurry that reflection is. Zero is completely shiny, and uh, one is completely rough. One thing I want to do is I want to use the control signal that I use to displace up this manhole and do like a metalness uh, malt on top. Let's take this manhole, let's make an AI range. So I'll take this control zero one out color, put it into input, and then we'll take this. I think it needs a red a single channel. So let's take the red channel, go up to manhole cover, go to other connections, metalness. So now that metalness is turned on completely, 
what I want to do actually is I want to malt this metalness control with the uh, spec range that I had over here. So I'm going to make a new AI range. Actually, I can just duplicate this one. So hit control D, duplicate that. And I'm going to input this spec into it. Plus minus average node again. And then I'm going to take the out color, put it into the first input. Oop. Take the out color for this new metalness mold, put it into the second input. I'm going to hit one to collapse it and one to collapse that. So I have my metalness, my metalness malt, and then I have this plus minus average. So let's take that single channel again, override that metalness. Okay, let's do a isolate select to see what that looks like. All right, so this is what the map looks like of this metalness control, which is this white one, and this metalness malt, which is this one here. So let's click on this, and then right now set to sum. Let's do subtract. Let's try average. Okay, I'm going to go to this metalness malt here. Actually, I'll click on this, and then I'll click on this little lock. So that way it stays on this metalness malt node, and then I can click on something else, and I can start to dial in the other attributes. Let's see what that looks like. All right, cool. So in the rusty areas, it's kind of a lot less of the metalness is being affected because I think rust is dielectric and then the metal area is metal, obviously. So let's look at the spec direct. That looks not too bad. Probably needs a little bit of work. What you could probably do is go and mess with this roughness a little bit more. All right, great. So well, let's look pretty good. So let me just let it take a minute here to resolve. And actually let's, I'm going to set the render settings to HD 1080. All right, let's let that run and I'll see you in a minute. All right, so that took about two minutes to render. And let's see. So let's take a look at the diffuse, albedo, diffuse direct, and this is the specular direct. So you can see uh, the light is being occluded and this displacement is working pretty good. All right. So, I mean, this definitely could be refined a little bit more, uh, but for just some photographs we took from the street, and uh, with not too much effort, got them converted and working in Arnold to give us a pretty cool result. Uh, got to give a shout out to uh, Andre Lebrov. This guy's freaking awesome. Uh, I just found him like not that long ago, but he's got some fantastic tutorials you should check out. Uh, he's really blown up. When I just found him like two weeks ago, he had like 8,000 subscribers. Now he's got like 22,000 almost, 21,000. Yeah, crazy. So yeah, uh, he's the one that actually gave me the idea for doing a um, stitch, st stitching a material together. Um, and I got some really good results with it. So you should try too. So that is how I approach displacement and uh, texture creation. Um, whenever you're getting your own maps. All right. So that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.